hello and welcome back to the wellness check I thought I'd do one more book review today before my day gets started and it very much piggybacks off of my previous video um, so take a look at that one this is a very complimentary book to what we just discussed and this book is called life without ed this is also a very popular book in the mental health field especially when it comes to um, eating disorders, recovery, what it takes to recover, how to hang in there and find resiliency through the tough work that it requires. It's by Jenny Schaefer. Um, I've read this one a couple times in the past. I think it's great. It's an autobiography. Um, and I think for people that are going through an eating disorder or are trying to recover or they're working with a therapist, an autobiography can be very helpful because as you are reading the book, you know that the person writing it has in their own way gone through it, recovered, and I feel like we can trust that a little bit more, right? Um, there can be some skepticism with some books of like, well, what do you know about eating disorders? Like, how do you know that this is going to work for me? Well, autobiographies are really good with that because these are people that have been on both sides of it and have fully recovered and know what it takes to get there. And that's what this book is. So in the eating disorder mental health community, a lot of times, especially in treatment facilities, eating disorders are called a name and the name is sometimes ED, E-D for eating disorder. So life without ED really means life without eating disorder. Um, it's That's kind of a, a common coping skill or tool to use in recovery is to externalize an eating disorder from yourself, to give it a name, to give it a persona. So that way you can see it as something either outside of you or as a part of you instead of something that is just completely you. A very helpful tool. So this woman, Jenny Schaefer, she's talking about um, Ed. She's talking about the impact that it had uh, through on her life, through her life, uh, she talks about perfectionistic tendencies. She talks about comorbidities that come with eating disorders, such as anxiety, depression, perfectionism, OCD, and how she struggled with those things too. She talks about some psychoeducation on the development of eating disorders. How do, like, why do we get them? How, why, like, why are they here? Um, that it's something that just does not happen overnight. It, it, there's a huge kind of build up to it. And then a, a large portion of it is looking at what it's going to take in order to get better. Now, recovering from an eating disorder is a very, very difficult thing. Statistics show in general, a person has an eating disorder for about seven years. Now, I've seen people with eating disorders that they've had for decades, right? They're, they're in their 50s, they're in their 60s, and they're still, they're still trying to work on it. But I've also seen people with an eating disorder for two years. There, there's a really big range. But on average, they say a person struggles with an eating disorder for seven years. And if we're talking about the work that it takes for recovery, it is a lot. And it is... Um, it's not recommended that a person does this on their own because it's too complex, it's too deep, and it just runs its fingers into every area of life. And it really takes a trained professional to help comb that through and help the person understand why they feel the way they do about their body or their interactions with food. She goes into that. It's beautiful the way she talks about it. Um, not only does she talk about how pervasive the eating disorder is, but she also talks about um, how to stand against it. I'm trying to look in here just to see if there's anything I wanted to highlight. Um, there's a whole whole section on the hard truth, getting serious about getting better, the not so fun parts, but also the fun parts. I know there, there are fun parts to recovery and it has everything to do with getting your life back and rebuilding your identity and figuring out who you want to be as a beautiful individual outside of an eating disorder. That's the fun part. And then there is also 
talking about like recovery 10 years after. So at the, towards the end of the book, she's totally recovered. She's talking about life after eating disorders. She's talking about, um, how to, what's the word? Prevent relapse. Sorry, I forgot my words for a minute. How to prevent relapse from happening or regressions or setbacks from happening. The likelihood that that could happen and what to do, where to go. This book is amazing. I think it's appropriate for, um, it, it's appropriate for teenagers. It's appropriate for adults. I would say older teenagers maybe. But there's something about struggling with an eating disorder yourself where you're able to open up a book and see the words of someone else who has struggled that can really make you feel seen and heard and validated of how tough and challenging an eating disorder is not only an eating disorder but the energy and work that it takes to recover so those are all the videos i'm going to do today um, Life Without Ed, this is a great book. I do recommend it, and you might even read it more than once. A lot of my clients have picked this book up more than once, and it's been very helpful for them. So again, I'm not being sponsored. I feel like I need to say that in every video. I'm not being sponsored by anybody. I just have a lot of books. I've read a lot of books, and I try to share that information with as many people as possible. So go take a look and let me know what you think. And like I said before, if there's anything that you want to see a book review on when it comes to mental health, you let me know and I will do a book review on it. Thank you for checking in with your wellness. I'll see you soon.